Today we're going to talk about timing belts and timing chains and what exactly they even are. What do they even do? Let's get started. This is a 97 Lexus LS400. You guys actually just saw a video on it showing how bad the timing belt was. It's cracked and I'll show you guys here again in a minute. But it got me thinking. There's a lot of gearheads, guys out there. I know what a timing belt is, but for the people that watch this channel, there's a huge percentage of people that have no idea what it is. You go to a mechanic shop and they talk about a timing belt needs to be done or a timing chain and in your mind you're like, I don't even know what the hell that is. I know that it costs two grand or fifteen hundred bucks or whatever to do it, but what am I paying for? What, it, what does it actually do? A lot of these things, especially timing belts, have scheduled intervals at certain miles are supposed to be done, and, and you're wondering why? So we're going to answer some of those questions today. If you're a gearhead and you're like, this is dumb, it's not dumb because you're going to see some things going on exactly what they do. Also, we'll take a look at the Audi back there here in a little bit, timing chains. Both of them do the same thing. They're just different methods of operation. And for those of you who know what timing belts and timing chains do, you're a guru, you already know it all. Maybe you have some friends that have no idea what this is. You can send them the link to this video. If they say, hey, what does a timing belt even do? You can say, here, here's a link. Let Car Wizard tell you what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on under the hood here. So the timing belt or chain sits at the front of the engine and it basically is like an orchestra. It times things that are happening inside the engine, but it's not something you can get to real easily. It's not your accessory belt like for your alternator. This belt runs internals inside the engine and to actually just get to it to even look at it. You can see here on these tables what all has to come apart. On some cars, it's quite extensive. You have a lot of pieces and parts on this table. Let's go ahead and jump into the engine bay. So here we have the front of this 1UZ FE engine, which is the 4 liter V8 in this LS400. As you can see, we have quite a lot of things apart. There's covers and accessories and External belts that run the AC compressor, all that stuff has to come apart to get to it. But we can see it says LCAM there. This, what I'm touching, is the timing belt. And you can see it has little teeth. It's not just a smooth belt like uh, you think on a V-belt or something. And the reason why it has teeth, you can see on the crankshaft, it has like a gear, it has teeth as well. It's a cog. And on the camshaft right here, it has teeth as well. So the main rotational thing inside the engine that's orchestrating all of this timing is the crankshaft, which is right here. All the main internals inside the engine are connected to this crankshaft. While it's rotating, we need to open these valves up here, which are underneath these cams. I'm actually touching and they have to be operated in the perfect time. You can't just open them whenever you want. This engine will not run if it is not perfectly timed in sequence. So as the crankshaft turns twice, the camshafts only turn one time. That's because it's a four-stroke engine. But you can see here where it says L cam, there's a tiny little dot right there that matches up to a little dot right here. This line, actually on the belt it actually says as well. If you go to the right cam you can see there's a timing mark there as well. So when you go take the belt off, you have to line everything up first with the old belt still on. Those little lines I just showed you, the little dots, also on the crankshaft has to be lined up. So you can take the old belt off and put the new one back on exactly in the same time, the timing, as the old belt was. You can't nonchalantly just throw the belt on and call it good because things will start happening at the wrong time and actually could destroy your engine. So some of the components that are part of the timing system, here's our crank gear or cog. This is an idler pulley. It helps keep tension on this side the back side of the belt. This is actually our water pump and I'll talk about that more here in a little bit. 
Here we have a tensioner pulley. The tensioner which sits down here is actually off right now. because Danielson is doing this job and he hasn't installed it yet. But it's like a little hydraulic spring that actually pushes up on the belt and keeps everything nice and tight. Because if it's not nice and tight, these little teeth will start slipping and then it won't be in time anymore. These dots and things won't line up like they're supposed to be. The old belt is probably not going to have any markings on it. The new ones will to help you because they want to make it a little easier for you. But the actual timing marks are stamped or actually cut into the metal gears or the cogs. So it doesn't wash off. You can actually put a new belt on. The belt doesn't matter where it's at. What matters is the actual cogs. They have to be located perfectly into the timing marks so it all lines up. So as you can see here, when we turn the engine over, all of this is turning in unison in time. If this timing belt ever breaks, the bottom will keep spinning, but these cams will stop, which means now the valves are going to be open at times they shouldn't be, and that's when they can collide if it's an interference engine and destroy your engine. If the bottom thing is turning, the top two have to be turning, and they all have to turn together in sequence and in perfect time. That is why this belt exists. You might have heard your grandpa or somebody older talk about timing lights, distributors, timing, the ignition timing, things like that. There's a lot of things that happen inside of an engine that have to be timed exactly right, at the right moment. If it's not, it'll backfire, it could cause damage, or just flat won't run. Engines are all about timing. Everything has to be timed perfectly. We don't use timing lights anymore, obviously, because the computer controls all that now, and it's not adjustable. The computer's in full control. You can't manually turn something and change the timing. So a question I get sometimes when we quote a timing belt job, it's usually timing belt and water pump. And a lot of people don't understand. They're like, why is the water pump involved in this? What, what is why does that always have to be changed every time you do a timing belt? If you look in this picture here, this is an older engine, a Chevy 350. You can see that the water pump is not ran off of the timing in the engine. It's just got its own basic V-belt ran off the alternator, AC compressor, power steering pump. Those belts out there are doing the water pump. But as we got into trying to consolidate things into an engine and make the package smaller, now we're not running the water pump off of just some untimed V-belts out there. Now we're running it off the actual timing belt itself. Here's our water pump. We saw the belt goes underneath and wraps around the cams. This doesn't need to be timed, obviously but it's just there to utilize the rotational motion of the timing belt to produce power to run the water pump. You cannot change the water pump without pulling the timing belt off. There's many times that the timing belt has nothing wrong with it, but just the water pump is leaking. It doesn't matter. If I'm going to pull off your timing belt to get to the water pump, you're going to get a new timing belt, new everything, because it's just such a risk on most modern engines. If they break, you can destroy the engine. Like I said, you cannot change this on this car without taking the timing belt off, which means all of this stuff has to come off just for your water pump. So how long does a water pump last if they're built well, like they should be? They usually last about as long as the timing belt. Timing belts on most vehicles are 80, 90, 100,000 miles. It's about that time that you can expect your water pump could be failing as well. One or the other can last longer than the other, but typically there's usually scheduled maintenance that the factory will say, at this miles you should do the timing belt and water pump. There are some vehicles that actually have it at 60 or 80,000 miles. Let's go look at a vehicle that has a much shorter timing belt water pump interval. Here we have a vehicle that doesn't have one timing belt. It has two. This is a 1998 Ferrari 550 Marinello. And here we can see, I'm not going to take it apart because we're not doing that work on this car, but there's two cam gears over here 
and two cam gears over here. And underneath these black plastic covers is basically what you just saw on the Lexus. Timing belts wrapped around cogs. All of these accessory belts and things would have to come apart. Here on this vehicle, the water pump, which is behind this pulley here, is ran off of a different belt than the timing belt. So it can be serviced separately, luckily. There are a lot of Ferraris, like the 348, the 355, where the engine has to come out the bottom to get to the timing belt because the engine's in the back. You literally can't get to the timing belts without pulling the engine out. This one, luckily, is not an engine out. It's right here, you can get to everything. But the thing is, we're used to 90,000 mile timing belt intervals, 110, 105. This car is 30,000 miles, only 30. This thing revs very high. It puts off a lot of heat and is very hard on timing belts. People don't drive these like a grandma. They're usually driving them pretty hard. That and the expense of this engine is so expensive and it is definitely an interference engine. You do not want to risk trying to go 100,000 miles on the belts and they break. You're really, really in trouble. So 30,000 miles on this one is all it is. Well, here in a minute we're going to take a look at a timing chain. But a lot of people say timing chain, timing belt, and they think there's two separate things going on in the engine. That must be a separate thing happening, but it's not. The same thing is happening. The identical work is being done. It's just chain versus belt. It's just like on a motorcycle. An older Harley will have a chain spinning the wheel. A newer Harley will have a belt. Actually, it looks like a timing belt. They're both doing the same thing. Transmitting power to the back wheel. That's the difference here, belt versus chain. That's the only difference. Let's go take a look at the Audi. That looks a lot scarier, doesn't it? There's a lot of things going on, and you should see some of the other Audis, the V8s and the V10s, where they have... Ch Here's a picture, actually. Timing chains can get insanely complex. This one's not so bad, but you can see a lot of the things that we just talked about are happening the same way in here, but we're not using a belt anymore. We're actually using a chain. Here we, you can see these other gears here. Some of those, sometimes they run an oil pump. It can be a balance shaft. Here's the oil pump down here, actually. You can see the little chain that's off there. But there would be from this cog, which is the crankshaft, going up through here to the cylinder head. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cart. As you can see, it's a similar situation. A whole bunch of stuff has to come apart to get to these. But we saw the cam cogs on the timing belt. It's the same thing here, except it's cam gears. And here's our chain. We don't have the cylinder head with this is being rebuilt right now, but the chain would wrap around these two cam shafts, which would be sitting right up in here. And it would wrap down around and run the cam shafts. Chains have a reputation for being more reliable, and on some vehicles they can last the life of the vehicle. They don't use pulleys like we just saw. We saw a bunch of round metal pulleys that help keep tension on the belt. We have guides. The chain actually runs along this plastic and slips on the backside along. And you can see oil. Oil actually lubricates it. Let me get the chain and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see here, the chain rubs on the guide. Those are the old ones. We're going to be putting new ones on. But it's completely different technology doing the same job. All we're doing is timing camshafts to crankshaft rotation. One uses belts, one uses chains. The same work is being done, though. Timing chains don't typically break. They can break but they are known to last much, much longer than a belt. It's, it's a hallmark in the Ferrari world. If you get a newer Ferrari that has timing chains and you're like, oh, thank God, I don't have to do those 30,000 mile stupid belt services anymore. The major problem with these is the actual guides. This brown plastic piece that's actually kind of adhered to the black can actually break off and fall off and fall into the oil pan it can change the timing. It can, you can get slack in the chain. It could skip teeth. A lot of bad things can happen. 
So when someone mentions they've had timing guide failure, that's kind of what it looks like. Here's another picture. It's kind of what it looks like. And as you can see, we just showed you it's quite a big job. Let's go take a look at the timing belt real quick before we close out the video and show a way that they can fail. So in the last video we talked about on this LS400, it had the original 250,000 mile timing belt, which is amazing that it hasn't broken by now. Here's the old one here. And you can see the cracks. I'll actually kind of pinch it here. Look at that, guys. It could literally break at any moment. I'm actually going to get some scissors and cut and show you what's actually holding this together. The rubber itself is not the strength in a timing belt. You hear that crunching? Those are like nylon or kind of a very heavy duty cords. You can see some of the fibers there. There's actually little strings or ropes, small, very small, all layered up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all lined up in a row. And then all that is coated in rubber. When these break, you can see the cracks here. They actually literally will just snap like that and then everything goes out of time and on some engines you just cost yourself probably ten thousand dollars so hopefully it helps a lot of you guys out like i mentioned if you have friends or family that say i just got a quote for timing belt and i don't even know what the hell that is you can say well go watch car wizards video here's the link it'll show you exactly what it is and what they're doing and why it costs what it does to get it done while danielson's been working on this i actually just came to my mind i was like i think i should do a video to actually show people what is this. I just paid 1800 bucks for this or that. What did they actually do to my car? And now you can see what exactly what was done. So if you're curious what kind of tools Danielson is actually used to work on this Lexus or any other car that's in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we have many more cool videos to come. And also, I'm going to start adding a video here every so often that's kind of instructional to show you what is this, why does it cost that much, and what does it actually do. So, hit the subscribe button, guys. Thanks for watching.